Hey everyone, Happy New Year. Hope you're having a very good start to 2024. I certainly am. Uh, sorry I did miss one Monday for the first time in a long time with a video release. Uh, not, put, not putting up Tom Scott numbers, but you know, he just retired, so maybe there's room to be that perfect on the internet. Uh, no, what I, what I have on my mind right now is so much new stuff that we're going to keep sharing, new tools, new tactics, new fun things, and whatever else uh, comes to my mind, because this channel remains a random collection of neural firings up in my noggin. But right now, my brain is dedicated mostly to Exigent Entry, the class we have coming up just after SHOT Show for first responders, firefighters, you name it, in Vegas. And that's why I'm thinking about the fire plug tool. So you've seen this before. In fact, we'll even throw up a little bit of uh, footage from a guy in Colleen, Texas. Uh, this was a firefighter named Jensen. And, you know, he was like, hey, man, I really love that fire plug. If you're not familiar what I'm talking about, this is the bottom plate, retaining plate, or eight plate crack attack. So uh, large, you know, sort of clones of the American 700 lock, or all American locks, frankly. But the, any that you have that, you know, figure eight retaining plate, right? You can crack that off with a, just a big screwdriver. And if you dump out the contents of the lock body, you, you knock the core out of the lock, well, you come along with this little tool we made called the fire plug, reach in there, boink, just flip it over, cock it over, it'll hit the actuator cam, it'll spring the shackle right open. Uh, we made this specifically to be big and chunky and operable if you're in your turnout gear or whatever you're doing. And it's nice because not only can it provide a very rapid method of entry, it's also decent kind of as a graceful entry tool. What, why am I saying, like, why would you ever use this in a, like, this is a destructive attack, right? Well, it is, but it isn't. See, the thing is, you can replace that bottom plate. We, we've got a billion of them. Like, we have, we use them in our training class. We have people do this in class, right? So I went to a manufacturer and I said, hey, can I just have a billion of this, this part? Here's the shape of it, like, right? And they said, oh, yeah, that's exactly what we need. Okay, yeah, we can make you those. And if I have so many, what I've been doing now, I've been going around to a lot of different firehouses, showing this tool, getting my feedback, and asking people, what do you think? What would you change? What would you like? What would you do? And everyone's been saying, hey, man, if you're going to sell these, like, you should, you should like, make a five-pack of those little repair plates available. Because if we can then, like, firefighters aren't going to stand there screwing parts back together, but if they can give the building owner, the client, the customer, say, hey, like, here's your lock. It's actually okay. Like, we had to crack this part, but here's a replacement little plate, and you could screw this back together, and you're up and, you're up and running. That's a whole nother world. And it makes this attack viable, again, for graceful entry, for non-priority calls, for welfare checks, for vehicle gates and other things. So that's what this video is about. This is how to do a repair process, how to reinstall that figure eight plate on the bottom of a padlock if a first responder has come along and cracked off the one that was on there to begin with. Uh, and this is going to be like the worst case scenario. This is if all the parts completely, all the ball bearings and everything fall out of the lock, which doesn't usually happen. But if you're in that position and you have the necessary piece to repair it, this is what you do. Or if you're on a red team engagement, and you use this technique because you want to put the lock back into service and not let anyone see that anything's weird because, again, the original key will still work if you put it back together. If all the parts fall out of the lock and you're like, oh man, what am I supposed to do again? This video is for you. So I'll let it play. I hope you have a very great start to 2024 and may all of your problems be as relatively easy to fix as what you'll see in this footage. You just need uh, a little bit of lube and a little bit of patience and Quite frankly, that gets us through many situations where we would otherwise be stuck, doesn't it? All right. Have a good time. Watch what I'm going to show you and stay safe out there. Hey, everyone. This is going to be a little repair guide video that may come in handy if you've used the fire plug after cracking off the eight plate on the bottom of one of these padlocks. You pop it open. Uh, now what do you got? Well, you've got a situation where you want to put the plug back in, reassemble everything, and get it working. This video will actually be a guide to kind of the worst case scenario, and that is one where in addition to dumping the plug, maybe the actual actuator cam fell out, and when that happens, typically the ball bearings come with it. So how do you get down in there? How do you, how do you reassemble things? How do you pack it all back together and get it working again if you have a repair plate? That's what we're going to cover in a few simple steps. So, of course, the point of this 
is that you can keep the same keying, keep the same bidding, keep everything functional for the property owner or the customer, and they don't have to rekey their whole system. It is nice that you can put these back into service, but of course there are a couple things we've got to do. Number one is get this out of here. You can see if you've done the crack off attack many times, the retaining screw and the little plunger stump, they remain typically down in there. Now, if all we did is put a screw on this, uh, we might just spin, 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 and that's not really gonna come out. So I will typically go in with needle nose pliers, hold this side steady, then we can get in there to that screw, usually a Phillips in almost all instances. Back it off until that comes free. There we are. We're gonna need that at the very last step. Now, here's where the fun begins. Down in here, we're gonna have to drop our ball bearings and then get them to pop outwards into the recesses that are only available if this comes shut. So we're fighting against spring pressure the whole time. So you're gonna be working down on a surface and we've covered our surface because not only will this keep my ball bearings from rolling away, but you're going to see we're gonna need a little bit of adhesive grease or something like that. And I say adhesive because we don't really care about lubing the inside. We care about keeping those ball bearings stuck in one position. So getting them coated with a little bit of aeroshell or even just you know medium grease, machine grease is fine. Uh, we have some super lube here from the safe department. But yeah, we're gonna need that. So when we drop ball bearings down there, we can nudge them into both corners and they don't go slipping back all over the place. Because ultimately, what we need to do is drop this down in such a way that this notch up here, you can see this protruding bump, that falls into this hollow void that you're about to see here. So if you can see that right about there, that's ultimately where this is gonna go, but it can't drop in there if there's ball bearings sitting in the bottom of this hole. We need that blind hole, drop the ball bearings in, we need to push them outward, then we can come along with this guy. We're gonna need to grease these ball bearings up a little bit, a little schmoosh. And if we just drop them right in, plop, plop, let's see what we can do. Now, of course, we need this shackle down. I'm gonna to try to do this in a way that you can maybe even see on camera what's going on. One ball bearing in one hole and one in the other. Now it's a little hard to see, but we should have both fighters in their respective corners. Don't let this spring up on you when that happens because we've got to get this guy dropped straight down and then we can even come along with our fire plug to help seat it and try to turn it into position because we have to fight that spring. We're very close now. Now you can see that spring coupler kind of bounced. So now with that pushed all the way in, we're looking pretty good there. I like to push this little retaining tab down just a little hair to really make sure it's seated, but this is locked, this is secured. You wanna keep inward pressure on the plug when you test this. Pop it, does it work? It should spring back. I hear it spring back. Looks pretty good to me. All right, we are ready to install the rest just like any locksmith would if they were rekeying the cylinder. That means we do need this open, so carefully. This should stay in with a little bit of uh, you know spring pressure against the side, but no guarantees. So don't bang it around really hard when you're flipping it every which way. Let's just get our cylinder on there. Remember, we bias it over to the right side as you're looking in on the front. Get our new retaining plate in place. Now, of course, replacement plates Sometimes they're not a perfect fit. You need to knock them in a little more. Every tool's a hammer. Okay. Little nut stump on this end. And while we would love that hole to line up perfectly every time, it doesn't always. So you might have to fiddle around with it a little bit as you drop your screw in there, give it some jiggles and wiggles, and try to see if that'll land. All right. And that feels pretty retained. Then you wipe your grease off of your tools and your hands and your padlock, 
and give it a couple test turns. How's that feel? Is it operating? Well, let's see. It should snap shut like this. And it does. There we go. So we've gone from a completely destroyed lock to one that's actually just fine and working again in almost no time at all. Now, some people would call this a semi-destructive attack, and, and that's true. I mean, you are wrecking one piece, but with a repair plate that you can replace, and you can, sometimes we even, you know, can say, hey, you need a couple of those extra screws, those little retaining stump nuts, we can help you out there. But this is, it's really nice when you go in there, I know that that big crack attack looks pretty garish, and using the fire plug is something more akin to what first responders would do, uh, not so much entry teams, but this destructive attack now becomes kind of a covert entry technique because from the outside, yes, there's obvious signs if you know what you're looking for. You can say, hey, somebody might have been messing around here and messed around inside. But to the average user, they come along again later. They just think, oh yeah, my key that used to work on Sunday, well, it still works on Monday morning. So I like this. I like it for entry teams doing covert work, but mostly, let's be honest, uh, the fire plug is going to be in the hands of first responders who are doing exigent entry type work. Whoever you are and whatever you do, I hope you're keeping yourselves and others safe out there, and I hope this has been helpful.